What is up, Merce Nation? Javier Mercedes here, and we are here with Joe O'Day, and we're gonna learn about shooting a portrait, a headshot. Today, we're gonna be doing, I guess, a little bit more of like what you would think of as a corporate headshot. It can get you a lot of work, and it can be something that's really consistent. We're gonna do a pretty basic two light setup that a lot of people can do at home. This is something that you can do with speed lights and regular modifiers that you can find, some white seamless background, or even against like a white wall or something along those lines. So what are the two lights that you're using right now? One of them is a wireless flash that I have set up to the remote on the camera. This is the Profoto 500 B2, the Air TTL. You definitely don't need anything like near this quality of light. This is something you can absolutely accomplish with just your ordinary speed light, as long as you have a remote flash for it. Attached is um, this giant Ellen Chrome softbox, which is pretty important to give the quality of light that we're gonna do in this headshot. Um, it'll give a lot of really, really soft light. This thing is huge, so just for like, reference this is how big this thing is is it like <laughs> the bigger it is the better or well the softer it is that's that's one of the the basic properties of light is the bigger the light source is relative to the subject the softer the light is going to be think of the sun it, the sun is super far away so it's very small relative to the subject it looks really small in the sky um it's going to give very hard shadows that have a very crisp line to them the closer you bring it, like that light source into it or the larger this light source is compared to the subject the softer the light's going to be so the softer the shadows are going to be those things are really really important to understand about light it'll let you control the light and kind of sculpt it the way that you want to in, the, in any given shot that you're going for whether you want to use hard light or soft light so what's this guy right here? Um, so this is just a basic run-of-the-mill reflector. You can pick these up for real cheap at any photo place. Instead of using a second light to fill in the shadows on the darker side of the face, this is gonna bounce some of the light back in. We can control how much light we bring back into the shadows by moving this out or moving this in to the subject. Once we take some test shots and see what the ratio is between the bright side of the face to the dark side of the face, and maybe bring this in a little bit closer to bring some of that light back in. There's daylight coming in. We have these lights up here on. Does any of that affect the actual headshot while you're taking the shot? Not really. It can, to some degree, you can get some light pollution. With the settings that we're gonna have dialed into the camera, you really shouldn't be picking up much of this light whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The one thing I probably would turn off is these pin lights uh, because they do actually have a tendency to show through uh, on the headshot every once in a while. The way it works with continuous light and flash mm -hmm. is most of the time it's not, it's not gonna pick up as much continuous light because the lights are so bright here. So the exposure needs to be very low, if that makes sense. Yeah. Go ahead and walk us through that other light that's over here. Yep. We're using this as a hair light, so it has a, a Profoto zoom reflector on right now. It's a hard light modifier, and we have a 10 degree grid. Grids are really an important thing to understand because they narrow the beam of focus of a light, if that makes sense. Yep, yep. So the light's not going to spill off to the sides here. It's going to like specifically go here because I want to minimize the amount of light that's getting pushed back into the camera lens, which can decrease increase contrast. And I want to have a lot of that contrast because a lot of the detailing of the features of the face. That's yeah, I, I'm thinking of like black and white. If you just put it in black and white and you brought up the clarity. Exactly. There's contrast and then there's what's called clarity, which is something you'll see on Lightroom and Photoshop now. And really the difference between the two is contrast is kind of overall contrast of the image and clarity is more what's called mid-tone contrast. Or it changes the contrast specifically within the middle of the histogram. Man, learning so much more about Photo, photocodrizing, photogorizing things, that's right. We're not saying photographing, it's photogorizing. <laughs> uh, I have the Canon 5D Mark III, so this is just a standard camera body that we use. Uh, the lens that we're using is the 24-105, the 4.0. This is an awesome lens, especially the first one to get if you're really getting into like professional photography. It is a little high on the minimum aperture at 4.0, but for studio photography, that doesn't really matter as much um, because I'm gonna be shooting at f8 anyway, so I don't need the very low minimum aperture. Yeah. Yep. Are you doing that so you get the, the face more in focus as yes. opposed to just like an eyeball? Yes, exactly. Cool. I'm doing that so I get everything in the image completely in focus. I wouldn't probably go too much lower than that. Unless you're doing it for like creative purposes. Yeah, exactly. Also, a trick for you is you can do a lot of that stuff in post. So sometimes for editors, it's actually better to shoot with everything in focus so they can go in 
in post and add that blur, that like Gaussian blur to the back. It's the um, flash stuff at. The lights are set at two different power settings. This one is set at 7.5 out of, out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, this deals in stops of power. So light is measured in stops of power, right? So mm -hmm. you have full stops and then you have like, you know, a third of a stop, a half of a stop. So this is set to 7.5 out of 10. 10 being the highest power, which is 500 watt seconds yep. out of this light. Um, so this is 7.5 on that 1 to 10 scale. Cool. These are the types of settings you'll probably see in a lot of um, studio photography. ISO, you want that to be as low as you possibly can because you're going to want the best quality. We don't need a high ISO because the lights are going to be so bright so quickly. Again, I'm at f8.0, which will make sure that everything is in focus from front to back in the image. One two hundredth of a second for our shutter speed uh, because this camera body only shoots up to one two hundredth of a second when you're using flash. Go to your left. Yeah, right there, okay. Once you have your technicals down to a science, that's never really gonna be your problem. A lot of the time is going to be uh, getting people in, getting them to be comfortable in front of the camera, kind of developing your shtick for the whole thing and um, getting a good expression for what you're trying to go for. Step one of posing is always to get the body where you want it to be. So you want to establish a good base from which then you can get the head in the right position and then the expression correct. Um, so kind of build it layer by layer of how you want this shot to look. Um, so I have Javi in the exact spot I want him to. The light looks pretty good on him. Look in. I think it looks pretty fantastic now. In this setup, the light's coming from this side, um, so I think I'd like to feature the left side of his face. Sometimes it depends on the person, but sometimes they either their left side of the face or the right side of the face is more dominant. Sometimes in a small percentage of the population, going straight on is the shot that you want because they look really good with the symmetry of their face. But more often than not, it's the left side, sometimes the right. I would have you bring that uh, right shoulder towards me. Mm -hmm. Yep, even a little bit more and um, kind of like adjust your body so you're a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Exactly, awesome. Bring that left shoulder towards me just a little bit more. So my right shoulder. Or your right shoulder, yeah, yes, exactly. Um, drop that shoulder down just a little bit. That'll give a nice dimension and also the back shoulder will kind of drift off into the bokeh of the uh, of the shot a little bit then once we lock down the body position this looks pretty good i think is a, a good base like starting position we then have to position the head correctly one of the shots that i really love is when that chin floats towards the shoulder that's going uh, downward your front shoulder mm -hmm. yep so bring your chin even a little bit more exactly right there and it's going to feel a little bit unnatural for the person um, at first but you can always reassure them by saying, if it doesn't feel a little weird, you're not doing it correctly. So <laughs> that makes no sense, it, but it kind of yes, makes sense. No, but that's the thing is it, <laughs> it, feel, it can feel very uncomfortable for the person that's doing it, but be confident and let them know that it's okay. It's going to look fantastic. You just have to like kind of muscle through it just a little bit. Yeah. We bring that chin this way just a little bit. Oftentimes, Javi's doing it kind of naturally, but when you have you, that drop shoulder, a lot of the time you want to tilt the head just slightly towards the shoulder that's dropping down. Mm -hmm. Not too much, not in any like super unnatural way, but just a little bit of a tilt can sometimes add a little bit of dimension to it. Mm -hmm. um, bring that chin this way just a little bit more. Then one other thing with the chin position, a lot of headshot photography is all about bringing out the definition of the chin. Oftentimes you'll notice on like uh, really good looking models is that they have this super defined chin line. And that's a lot of the time what you're trying to do is really bring out the definition of the chin. It's gonna make for a much, much stronger shot. So the way you can do that is kind of almost like a turtle would push its head like out of its shell. Um, you kind of want to push the chin towards the camera. So you want to keep the shoulders exactly where they are, push the chin a little bit towards me, make sure the chin's not too high so you're not getting too much neckline. Um, but so if the person ever does that, you can always tell them, push out your chin, but then bring it down just a little bit kind of a thing. Bring the chin this way, bring it a little bit more. Right there, hold that. Let's try this. Nice, this looks pretty good. Actually, for the body position, for the head position, it's not bad. The expression we'll work on in just a second. But yeah, I think this is a really solid foundation. And kind of step into the shot if you can. Kind of like the way you would kind of like this. Yeah. So you're kind of like creating like interest yeah. like for the person. Straighten up just a little bit, not quite as much of a, and broaden out the shoulders a little bit. Kind of feels like you're pulling them forward. Not so much. <laughs> bring, your, uh, bring your chin this way a little bit more. Straighten your head out just a tiny bit. Let me see that. Nice, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Let's do the same thing, but straighten those shoulders out just a little bit more. Like, ro rotate your chest a little bit more. Let me see that. We're getting there. 
I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is, yeah, expression. I think I actually want to bring this in just a little bit to even up the shadows, kind of brighten the shadows just a tiny bit. Facial expressions, a lot of the time in corporate headshots. Um, they can be a little tricky uh, because you don't necessarily want the person to have this big, bright smile. That's not really exactly what you're going for a lot of the time. Uh, really what you want to show is that the person is confident, that they're approachable, um, basically just that they're the f***ing boss, you know, that they just walked in and you're like, wow, I really respect this person. So having that in your headshot already establishes that for you right from the get-go. So the way to do that is oftentimes through what's called a squinch. Um, is squinch. The squinch. Yeah. This is, it's extremely important in headshot photography and some portrait photography as well, but it's the difference between squinting your eyes and squinching your eyes. The difference is when you're squinting your eyes, your top eyelid comes down, um, but in a squinch, you're engaging the muscles in the bottom of your eyes to, uh, to come up just a little bit. Do a squint where you like squint at something. Nice. So the difference between a squint is when you're squinting at something like you can't see it from a distance uh, versus a squinch is when you engage the muscles in the bottom of your eye right here. You keep the top eyelid relatively the same. You'll see it all the time in magazines when people are trying to like look super sexy at some sort of like GQ kind of a thing or whatever and they kind of have this like squinched look like this. That's what you're going for is you want to put you want to engage those muscles in the bottom of your, of your eye or ask the other person to and it just it has a really great look to it. Let's see. A little bit less, a little bit more. A little less squint. Yeah, shape. like, nice, let me see that. That's a little bit better. I'm squinting a little bit, I think, but that's, that's a little bit better. Keep your eyes a little bit more open as you do it. You're not bringing the bottom up so much as much as you are engaging the muscles. Mm -hmm. Do it one more time. Cold steel over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. That's not bad. A lot of the expression I think that you're getting out of people with headshot photography, if it's done really well, is almost kind of this like, I kind of know something that you don't know, if that makes sense, in like a really like coy and confident way. Let me see this. That's pretty good. That's really good actually, I like that a lot. And the squinch was good. You don't often ha have to have like some big uh, smiling expression. I think what Javi has as far as like the mouth is perfect, because it's just kind of like a little bit of a smirk. Uh, like nothing crazy though. Nice, cool. Still, I'm focusing still. so much on my face. No, you're doing. Right no, now. you're doing it's fucking like <laughs> great. But that's the thing is, you get the person to lock their body in. You say, okay, hold that. Make sure that the chin is isolated out. That we're getting good chin definition. And then you work on the facial expression. You want to kind of coach the person through that um, before the headshot, if possible. Sometimes you only have like five minutes with the person, so you can't exactly do that. Um, but if you do have a little bit more time, it definitely is worth the effort. Let's actually switch it up. Let's do the other shoulder towards me. So you can shift your body position. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Bring that shoulder down, and let's have the head float off to the exact same way. Oh, yep, okay, so exactly. Way. Chin towards me just a little bit. Uh, tilt your head up just a tiny bit, and uh, bring your chin down just a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nice, that's pretty good. Kind of step into the shot just a little bit more. Yeah, that's great. Let's do a couple more. You also want to be shooting about uh, chin level of the person is usually uh, where, where you want to be at. Uh, sometimes straight on with the eyes, sometimes a little bit lower. It really depends on how you want the shot to look. A lot of the time when you find those key positions that you really like, you can kind of float back to those. Sometimes you'll get some that are a little bit more profile shots. Sometimes you get some that are a little bit more head on. Um, it really just depends on uh, what you like and prefer. You can kind of like have those ones in the bank to always come back to. Where can people find you, Joe? Um, so I'm on Instagram. Uh, my handle is uh, Joseph O'Day. So Joseph and then O-D-E-A. And there you can you find me here in the studio. <laughs> Just like stop things. by the chive. <laughs> yeah, stop by the chive, have a beer. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys found this helpful. Leave a question down for Joe in the comments about portrait, headshots, yeah, anything, you can, photography. You can, you can ask me anything. Yeah, slide into his DMs with that photography, that yep. photography lingo. Yep, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Till next time, Merce Nation, Javier out. <laughs>